What's up, Redeemed Church? Hey, it's me, your friend Eddie Johnson, just here hanging out with you guys, doing, um, picking up on our message on the 23rd Psalm or Psalm 23. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about Psalm 23, verse 5. Uh, but before we get into that, I just got to tell you, Psalm 23 is one of the most popular passages of Scripture probably in history. Uh, and whenever I think about the 23rd Psalm, two things come to my mind. Uh, number one, not to get morbid, but our funerals, okay? I have been to so many funerals when this psalm has been read at the end of some person's life. Uh, I've seen so many funeral programs where it comes up, and, and I get it and I understand, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. I know a little morbid, a little weird, but that's the first thing I always think of. The second thing I always think of when I think of the 23rd psalm is I think of music. I know, kind of weird. Funerals and music, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But the reason why I think about music is because there are so many songs that reference the 23rd Psalm, Psalm 23 in some way, shape, or form. And I'm not talking worship music or hymns or stuff you would sing in church. I'm talking about stuff you sing in the club or stuff that you were bumping on your eight track player. Okay, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Like, like so many artists have referenced the 23rd Psalm. I'm talking bands like Good Charlotte, Megadeth, U2, Pink Floyd, um, rappers like Puff Daddy and Notorious B.I.G., even the Grateful Dead. So many different artists have referenced Psalm 23 in their lyrics and in their music. And the one that stands out to me above all else is none other than the legend himself, El Cool Magnifico, Coolio, in his rap, Gangster's Paradise. If you know that song, Gangster's Paradise, come on now, all my 90s kids out there, yeah, we know what's up. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left because I've been blasting the masses so long that even my mama thinks that my mind is gone. Who thought that when you turned on Redeemed Church on YouTube or you listened to the Redeemed Church Sermon Podcast, you were going to get Eddie spitting verses from Coolio and Gangsta's Paradise. Been spending most our lives living. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. Go ahead and bump it. Listen to it on iTunes or on Spotify next and do that stuff. But, but that's what the 23rd Psalm is all about, right? It is iconic. And when I think about why it's so iconic, I wonder why. Why, why is it so much a part of ingrained into the fabric of our culture and into what we think about and what we do? Why have so many people in history wanted read on their, in their final days? Um, and why is it so much a part of music and, and, and pop culture? And I think the reason why is, is because when you walk through the 23rd Psalm, it's all stuff that we can pretty much identify with. Even if you don't understand every concept, you can, you can pick up on things and you can say, yeah, I can understand that. I can feel that. I, I identify with that. Let me just read Psalms 23 and then we'll get, jump into this message. Psalms 23 or the 23rd Psalm, the only Psalm we ever refer to like that, right? The 23rd Psalm. All right. Psalm 23. I'm going to read out of the NIV. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Even if you don't, if you're not a shepherd or a farmer, you can understand this imagery, right? The shepherd and the sheep. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. I think the beauty and the imagery that it gives here, green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the darkest valley or the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I think so many of us, we can identify with walking through death and pain, walking through anxiety and fear. We can identify with that. Verse five, the verse we're going to talk about today, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You're probably wondering why we're sitting at a table. Well, this is why we're sitting at a table because our verse today talks about how God prepares a table for us. But let me keep reading, we'll get back to that. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Man, hey, before we go any further, let me pray. Father, be with us today as we dive into your word and we dive into Psalm 23 verse 5, and help us see what you're saying to us here. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Verse 5 in Psalm 23, you prepare a table for me. Man, we're sitting here at this beautiful table with a place setting right here. Got the glass of water. Let me take a quick sip. And we're reading Psalm 23, verse 5. And 
I, I want to, uh, as I was reading this and I was preparing for this message, I, I, I was just, I was processing this verse because the verse we're, we're hitting on today is verse five. I was processing this verse and, 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 and two things really stood out to me when I read this verse. Two main observations that stood out to me when I read verse five. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. There's two observations I have here. Number one, did you notice that from the first half of Psalm 23, my first observation is this, the first half of Psalm 23 and the second half, the imagery changes. It goes from talking of a shepherd and a sheep, sheep and shepherd, to now the host at a party or at a banquet table and to us ostensibly as the guests, okay? The imagery changes from that of a shepherd to a banquet host. All right, and it's really important that we notice that there's a change in imagery here because here's the other reality. Even though the imagery changes, okay, the context doesn't, okay, which brings me to my second observation. Here's what you need to know. The reality is about Psalm 23, verse 5. The table is real. The table is real. The host has prepared a banquet table for us, but not only is the table real, the threat is real. Did you catch that? It says here that you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Here's the beautiful part that the psalmist, the psalmist David understands about how he relates to God and who God is, is this, is just because the setting changes, just because the, 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 the words change, the context doesn't change. He is still in the midst of walking through this dark valley. He is still in the midst of walking through the shadow of death and in the midst of enemies all around him, in the midst of anxiety and fear and all the stuff all around him. And though everything's all around him, the host still prepares a table for him in the midst of his enemies. I can't think of any verse that's probably more important in the year 2020 than this verse. In the midst of all the craziness, the host prepares a table for you, for us, for David, for the psalmist, in the midst of all our enemies all around us. This is fascinating because here's what you understand is the important takeaway from Psalm 23 is this, is you have to look at the posture of the host in this situation. The, po the host is saying there is a more appropriate posture during the problem. The posture when you're surrounded by your enemies is not one of fear or anxiety. The posture that you should have when you're around your enemies is to be sitting at the banquet table of the Lord of hosts. Now, here's the cool thing about God. God doesn't ignore the problem. He doesn't say the problem doesn't exist. He acknowledges the reality of the problem. The threat is real. But he says there is a more appropriate posture in, midst, in the midst of the problem that you should have. That's, the, that's what's going on here. It, it's Psalms 23, verse 5. It's all about what's the posture you have when, when COVID-19 hits? What's the posture you have when the pain of this world gets to you? What's the posture you have when your kids or your spouse or whatever, when everything's going haywire? What's the posture you have when your enemies are circled all around you and they're ready to attack? The host posture is one that says, come, sit with me. Uh, as I was reading this, there were three points that stood out to me, okay? When we talk about the posture of the host, there's three things I see about the posture of the host. All right, so let's dive into this. Posture number one of the host is this. Posture one of the host, it's a posture of invitation. When everything is swirling around, when the enemies are attacking, when you're walking through the valley of a shadow of death, when you're wrestling against all the stuff of the world, the host says, come. Sit with me, dine with me. One other thing that happens here in verse five, verse four and verse five, is not only it does the metaphor change, the context change from a shepherd to a host, but also what you see when you read Psalm 23 is it goes from being a third person account to now a second person conversation. Starting with verse one, we see the Psalmist David writing about the shepherd and he says he, he says he, but now here in verse five, what you see is you see the Psalmist David saying you, you. It's turned from an account talking about something third party, third hand, to now a conversation between the host, the God, God in heaven, the, the shepherd, the one who loves him, and the guest, David, or us. 
And there's an invitation where now David is saying, you as the host, you as God, in the midst of all my craziness, you invite me, you give me an invitation to dine with you, to sit with you, that in the midst of the chaos, you give me an invitation to change my posture. Third, the second thing I see when I look at this is not only the posture of the host is one of invitation, but the posture of the host is one of anointing, all right? You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil. You gotta think that when David wrote this, he immediately flashed back in his mind, right? He immediately got transported back to the moment when Samuel came to his father's house, looked at all of his brothers, and said, I'm still looking for one more. And this kid, this ruddy kid, all right, one translation of the Bible says, who was good looking, kind of probably looked like me, you know what I'm saying? All right, came in and he said, Samuel said, that's the one the Lord had me come here for. And Samuel anoint David with oil and says, you're gonna be the next king of Israel. You are going to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. You're gonna be the Christ example for this nation and for these people. The posture of the host is one of invitation and the posture of the host is one of anointing. Anointing says, I am with you and I am empowering you. That's what David experienced while walking through the valley of the shadow of death, while, while wrestling with his enemies. He, he encountered the host, the God of heaven, who invited him to come to the banquet table and said, I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna empower you. The posture of host is one of invitation, one of anointing, and the third thing I see about the host is the host posture is one of abundance. It's one of abundance. Now, we don't have any food here at the table. Sorry about that. But you can go ahead and Dave Reesinger, shout out to Pastor Dave, go ahead and get your chicken skins, go ahead and get your Cheetos, go ahead and get your popcorn with all your sprays of butter on it, okay? Do your thing, all right? Okay, whatever you want at your table. Here's the beautiful part about the host. Whatever you put at your table, whatever you fill in your cup, the reality is, is the host, God in heaven, the great shepherd, the good shepherd, is a God not of lack, but a God of abundance. Your cup is overflowing. The table is always full. There's always more than enough for you and for everyone else. The posture you should have in the midst of your enemies attacking is one of abundance. My God is more than enough. More than enough. The posture we should have, because it's the posture of the host. It's one of invitation. I'm with you. It's one of anointing. I'm with you and I'm empowering you. And it's a posture of abundance. There is more than enough. Church, we are in some crazy times right now. Crazy times right now. Fear and anxiety are running rampant. Confusion is real. There's definitely something going on in the spiritual realms. There's so much going on in the spiritual. There's so much going on in the natural. But in the midst of all these things, that are going on, the host, the good, the good shepherd has invited us to come be with him in the presence of our enemies, in the presence of all the pain, in the presence of all the anxiety, to sit and to dine and to experience his anointing and to experience his abundance. Man, that's powerful. Man, that's good stuff. Uh, that, 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 that gets me excited when I think about that. So what do we do about that today? What do we do about that today? How does this relate to us? How do we make this a reality in our lives today? Here's what I wanna to do today, church. Is, and th this might be a little unusual, but we're gonna do something we haven't done uh, on the times we've done uh, these YouTube uh, sermon series during the season. Is we're actually, right now, wherever you are, maybe you're on a walk, maybe you're on a run, maybe you're at home, maybe you're driving in your car, Wherever you're at, take a minute right now, and I want you to create a sacred space between you and God. Come to his table. Uh, a lot of times in church, we talk about the altar, right? In the Old Testament, we see this idea or this, this thing called the altar. It's a place where people commune with God, where they meet with God. Uh, when I was coming up as a new believer, it's called the altar because it alters lives, right? Create a sacred space, a table, an altar with you and God, and come, respond to his invitation, Connect with his anointing and flourish in his abundance right now, wherever you're at. And here's what I want you to do, okay? This is different. Like I said, this is different, okay? On the link to this video, there's gonna be a link to a song called To the Table. Now, I started this message by talking about music that references Psalm 23, okay? 
this, there's another song, whenever I read Psalm 23, I should say, there's another song that often comes to my mind, and it's a song called To the Table. It's not a direct reference to Psalm 23, but whenever I read these words in Psalm 23, I think about the song called To the Table. It's by a guy named Zach Williams, who's a worship leader. Maybe you heard of him, maybe you haven't. Now, here's the funny part. He's definitely got a country twang to him, and your brother right here is a little bit more hip-hop and a little bit more rock and roll, not so much country. But the, the genre of music doesn't matter. The words are powerful and the words are amazing. Here's what we're gonna do. As we end, as you end your time listening to this message, I want you to flip to that song to the table. You can click the link in this video, or if you're listening on the podcast, search Zach Williams to the table. And I want you to listen to that song. And the song is all about how we can come to the table and bring anything and everything to the great host, to the Lord, to the shepherd, the God that loves us. And we can give our lives to him as an offering and he will take it all. He will take every bit. How we're gonna end this message is, I want you to take some time during that song to pause, and to pray and to reflect and then to invite the Holy Spirit into your life to say, God, Holy Spirit, help me to sit at your table in the midst of all the chaos. Help me to sit at your table in the midst of all my enemies surrounding me, okay? Let me just see a couple lines of the song and then we'll close. The song goes like this, bring it all to the table there's nothing he ain't seen before. Man, isn't that powerful? You can bring it all to the table. There is nothing that the Lord of hosts, the great God in heaven, the good shepherd, there's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing he hasn't seen. And he is with you with anointing and abundance. Let me pray for us today. And hey, I love you. God loves you. There's nothing you can do about it. Father, be with us today. God, help us to respond to your invitation, that we would come to you, that we would receive this anointing, the empowerment you have for us, and that we would live in the abundance of your blessing, the abundance of relationship with you. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, Redeemed Church, one more time, I love you. Hey, we'll see you at church next Saturday.